All right, so now in this video, we'll be moving from the first example to the second example and introducing the catch-up in an Excel template. As a quick reminder, on the first template, the waterfall worked through these steps, return of principal, the preferred return, and then an 80-20 split. And on the next template, we will be introducing the catch-up and then again calculating the 80-20 split. So we will be starting on the tab titled 20% and 80-20. Now on this tab, everything through the first distribution is identical to the process that we went through on the tab titled 80-20 previously. So we can really just resume where we left off with row 46 on second distribution. And what we're saying here is that now the GP is entitled to 20% of all distributions made up to this point, including this step. So let's work through this formula off to the side. As we just illustrated, the sum of all cash flows distributed, including the return of principal, the preferred return, and the catch-up, is equivalent to the sum of cash flows included in the distribution for the return of principal and the preferred return, divided by 80%. And since for the second distribution, we only want to know the value of the catch-up, you simply subtract the return of principal and the preferred return from this value. And that's the value of the catch-up, assuming we have sufficient proceeds. And in the event that we do not have sufficient proceeds, we use the min function to select the lesser value, whether that be proceeds remaining or the value of the catch-up we just calculated. And because proceeds remaining are far in excess of the catch-up, in this instance, it returns the value we calculated off to the right. After that, we again calculate proceeds remaining after the second distribution. And in the third distribution, these remaining proceeds are again split 80-20. And then finally below, under grand total proceeds, we sum the distributions to the GP, including the catch-up and the 20% split after the catch-up, and to the limited partners, which includes the return of principal and the preferred return, and the 80% split after the catch-up. And then again at the bottom, you'll see that our proceeds in row nine are equal to our total proceeds in row 62. And the nice thing about this distribution waterfall as an educational example is that so long as there are sufficient proceeds to work past the second distribution, the total split between the GP and LP will work out perfectly to 20% and 80%, which makes it pretty easy to check your math. All right, guys. We have one more minor tweak before this video series concludes, but at this point we have a fully functional waterfall. It's just a little bit more favorable to the GP than what might otherwise be expected. And I'll explain why that is in the next example. All right, that's it for now.